Hello, my name is Caden Stevens, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco's Software Defined Access Solution Team. Today I'm going to talk about our brand new SDA design tool. This tool is developed to create a high level design for your future or current SD access deployment. Before I can get into the tool, it's important to note that this tool does require a fundamental understanding of the SD access solution to have a positive experience while using it. If you want to find out more about SDA, please feel free to visit our Cisco Software Defined Access YouTube channel or go check out the latest Cisco DNA Center data sheet. Next, we'll get into the tool, how you can access it, use it to your advantage, and create a high-level design, which leads into your own personal CRD. We'll then take a brief look over everything we've done and close out. All right, here we are. Let's get started. We'll head over to our address bar and start typing in cs.co forward slash SDA hyphen design hyphen tool. Press enter. It will prompt me to log in here. I'm going to go ahead and input my credentials and then fast forward to the landing page. Here we are on the Cisco One App landing page. As you see here, this page has different help desk services as well as Cisco sizing and performance tools as well. Our tool is located here on the left hand side. And here is our preliminary page for the design tool. The tool is broken up into four different sections. I have a current network assessment, deployment scale and latency assessment, some questions on network characteristics, and then it leads into creating our fabric site profiles. Let's hit proceed. And this is our home page for the design tool. I have two different designs right now. I have an SDA test video one and an SDA test deployment one. One's in the draft process and then one's in the finalized process. If a draft is finalized, it can no longer be edited. You cannot revisit and change anything. So it's very important that the draft is filled out to your liking and filled out to your standards before you're ready to lock in and finalize it. Let's go ahead and hit create new design. And here's a page for various partner and customer information. The only thing that is required on this page is the design name. So let's go ahead and fill that out. Let's hit save and continue. All right, so here we are at the beginning of the design tool. As I've mentioned before on the left hand side, there's a current network assessment, scale and latency assessment, and then a section on network characteristics. Something to note here about the tool is that it's not linear, meaning that I can hop around from the current network assessment and then go over to the network characteristics portion too as well. And as long as I'm hitting save and continue along the way, everything should be all good. We'll go ahead and start with the current network assessment that's broken into three different sections, a section on Cisco DNA Center, Identity Services Engine, which is ICE, and Endpoints. We'll hit continue. It's going to ask me whether I have Cisco DNA Center deployed or not, and if so which model, and what version of code am I running if I do have it deployed. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this assessment process, but I will stop at notable points to provide more information. We'll answer similar questions about ICE. And this endpoints question is important. How many total wired and wireless endpoints are active on the network at one time? And it's asking us to consider all the locations that will be managed by Cisco DNA Center. Save and continue. And then we're on to the scale and latency assessment that's broken up into Cisco DNA Center, ICE, and shared services. We'll move on to answering questions about ICE. And next, our shared services. Save and continue. And now we're on to the network characteristics portion of our assessment. And we made it to the network characteristics summary. So something to point out here is that on the right hand side, the tool is suggesting whether we need a single fabric site or multiple fabric sites to facilitate a design requirement. We implemented this here so that you, the user, may think that you need a single fabric site to facilitate a design requirement, when in reality, you need two or more to facilitate that need. 
Let's zoom in on a question here and check this out more. So in your deployment, are there multiple buildings or locations that have or require direct internet access? We answered yes, and the tool is suggesting multiple fabric sites. If we head back over to the network characteristics tab, scroll down to our question and select no, hit save and continue, we'll see that a single fabric site is now being recommended. Let's proceed on to the fabric site profiles. So here we are in the fabric site profiles page. As you see here, we have no profiles yet. So let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll enter in our profile name. And the number of sites that we're considering to as well. Let's put three for now. All right, so here we are beginning to answer questions about our fabric site profile. It's broken into answering questions about fabric roles, our wireless deployment, endpoint scale, segmentation requirements, external layer two connectivity, and questions about multicast and transits too as well. Let's hit continue. Here it's asking which platform is planned for the border node of the SD access network. I'll go ahead and select a 9600 series switch here. For our control plane node, I'll also select 9600. And for our intermediate nodes, we have a multi-select tool so we can select multiple different platforms if need be. I'll select the 9400 and a 9300 series switch. Edge nodes, I'll also do the same. And for our extended nodes, I'll select the Catalyst 9000 series switch. We're now on to answering questions about our wireless deployment. Now these questions about the endpoint scale are important because the tool is going to recommend a border node and control play node based on our answers. So what is the maximum number of active, wired, and wireless endpoints for a site in this profile? I'll say 2,000. IPv6 is deployed within the site for this profile, how many IPv6 addresses per endpoint will be used? I'll say five. Save and continue. Segmentation requirements. External layer two connectivity. Multicast. Transits. All right, so we've finished creating our first fabric side profile. Something to note here as well is that you can create as many profiles as you like. If you want to create a new profile with new information, it's completely up to you. But for now, we'll stick with just the one and generate our first CRD. We'll hit download CRD. And a local Microsoft Word document was downloaded to our computer. Let's go ahead and open this. And here's our first generated CRD document. We have our scale and latency assessment, our fabric site design assessment, and then our fabric site profile section too as well. If we want, we can go up here and click on view in Microsoft Word, and then click on navigation pane. And we see on the left hand side, a navigation pane was populated, which allows us to nicely click to where we need to be. Let's go ahead and click on fabric nodes. As you can see here, it's going to give a detailed layout of our border nodes, control plane nodes, intermediate nodes, and so on. And here are all the different platforms that I chose in the tool. We can scroll through this document just a little bit. And I want to go check out our topology. So we'll go all the way to the end and take a look at our proposed fabric site topology. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. Something to point out here is that this topology was automatically generated based on our design requirements. So if I go back to the tool, go back to my designs, 
open up our design that we were working on. Save and continue. And I go back into our fabric site profiles, hit edit, and go into our external layer two connectivity. I can read a question, will any of the subnets in this profile require extending the same subnet to a non-fabric network for migration purposes? If we go back to our topology, we see here on the right-hand side, this border node has layer two connectivity to a non-fabric site. So this topology will automatically update as you make your changes within the tool. All you have to do is generate a new customer requirements document. And if you don't like this topology, that's completely fine. We provided a Microsoft Word document that way you can edit and change it to your needs. So that way you can be happy with the finalized outcome. All right, that completes my walkthrough of the SDA design tool. Let's take a recap of everything we've done. So if I go back to the tool here and go back to fabric site profiles and go back to home, go back to my designs. We first created our first SDA T1 design. We gave it a name and answered various assessments. We took a look at first our current network, our scale and latency assessment, answered some questions about network characteristics. And then lastly, after the three sections were completed, we were able to proceed on to create our first fabric site profile. We do know that we can create as many fabric site profiles as we would like to. These profiles are all gonna be attached to the original design that we were working with and attached to all the questions that we answered in the assessments. Once I'm finalized and I'm happy with this design, I can click Generate CRD. Once I click Finalize, I will not be able to go back and change this design. Let's go ahead and click Finalize here because we're happy with our design. And there you have it, success, design finalized. Thank you for tuning in and watching a walkthrough of this brand new SDA design tool. Again, my name is Caden Stevens. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and provide feedback. Take care.